Well, the Hustler Fund, or the Financial Inclusion Fund, is a key plank of the government to increase financial inclusion as well as access to credit for small and medium enterprises. Launched eight months ago, this week on Inside Government, we want to revisit the Hustlers Fund and, of course, look at the scores and the misses. Joining us on the set is Elizabeth Nkuku. She is the Acting Managing Director of Hustlers Fund. She's going to help us understand where we are, the challenges, and how they are surmounting them, and what the future portends for the fund. Thank you very much indeed, Elizabeth, for your time. Thank you. Uh, so eight months down the line, what would you say has been the biggest success uh, of the Hustler Fund? When the Hustler Fund was set, there are two things that needed to achieve. One, help the individual and also uh, through helping build an income. So access to credit was one of the biggest challenges that people had to run their businesses or the, the hustler had to, to build their businesses. Some of them could not access any form of credit and if they did, it was very expensive. So what the hustler fund has done is actually create an affordable credit avenue for the people who really care about building their businesses. That's one. The number two, the saving culture. As a country, we kind of live hand to mouth. So one of the things that the hustler fund has done is actually help people save for their retirement. So that is a big, big thing that, because some of these things are a habit. How do I help you help yourself? So I think the Hustler Fund is doing that by making sure that you're saving for your retirement and you're having the, the credit that you need to run your business. Mm -hmm. How much uh, money have you lent so far? So in terms of the total amount of money that has been lent, is well above 33 billion. So we are almost now moving to 33.5 billion in terms of money that has been disbursed. We have seen a lot of repayments as well, uh, over 23 billion having been repaid. So the numbers are growing every day. We are seeing a lot of many, a uh, lot of repeat customers coming in and just taking money for their businesses. Mm -hmm. And and so um, that's about a repayment rate of about 67 percent, right? Uh, would you say that's a good repayment history? By any chance, ask anyone, anyone running a digital product, this is one of the best performing digital products. So at 70% repayment rate, it is really, really a good, a good thing. And people actually, you can actually see people paying and borrowing because the rate, of, um, the, the rate is, is, is really affordable and at the same time the money is available. So it's a good... Uh, out of the, the 33% you know, percent, uh, that, is, that, that, that um, is yet to be uh, repaid, what of these would you classify as a bad debt? So usually when you look, go, go into banking, there are those things that you look at and say, how, how many people haven't maybe paid in over a hot period of time? So when you look at the Hustler Fund, when the initial, no, actually for most digital product, again, or most lending products, the people look at maybe earlier on and don't pay, those will be considered like a um, bad debt. But the number is still very low right now. We are still monitoring and also trying to make sure that we are and telling people the reason why they should, they should pay. So one of the things is, how do you make sure people realize that this is not money that is meant not to be repaid, it's a loan to the government. So how do you change the mindset? So that someone realizes this money is supposed to help me and help my brother. So that is one of the things that we will be embarking on to. A lot of conversation, a lot of training, and also just changing people's mindset. You need to do this, you need to repay because your brother needs the money, because you have benefited from the same money. Do you also agree that, um, you know, out of the debt that is yet to be repaid, um, you, there is what you would also classify as a bad debt? Definitely. If you're running a um, quote-unquote a lending business, there is always a bad debt that comes in. There are people who just won't pay because either their mindset or maybe their business went bust. So what are we doing to make sure that these people actually realize they need to pay? It's really giving, extending a lot of grace to them, explaining to them why they need to pay so that we can actually reduce that. And look at it. You're getting money almost for free. 8% is almost for free, so you can, we, with people seeing what this is going to do, so we shall share a lot of success stories so that people can see the, what other people have been able to do with the money that they're getting from the Hustler Fund. Mm -hmm. And that way it will actually push people to actually pay. And there is an emerging uh, culture or trend whereby you're having so many people, you know, uh, borrowing, you know, from their phones. Um, <laughs> But then at some point they change their, 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 you know, their phone numbers and, you know, you lose that money. I mean, how are you dealing with this? Our unique identifier is the ID. So whether you lose, you, you, you get your number from Safaricom, you take it to Telcom or you take it to Airtel, we shall catch you. 
you'll because uh, your unique identify is your ID. So for as long as you're going to be transacting with the ID to actually buy another line, we will always know that you are the person who defaulted on the other part. So we using that as a central thing and also knowing that you must for you to register a phone you need an ID, then it brings the number of people who are going to default much to much lower. So you cannot run from Airtel or Safaricom to a new number. We shall definitely know that you are the same person who had borrowed and defaulted. So um, if you catch me uh, after defaulting, what do you do with me? For now, it is really, uh, we are speaking to you and at the same time you cannot and get uh, maybe an additional increase in your, in your, in, in your, um, in your Hustler fund. Then now we launch the Chama product. You cannot be able to borrow from the Chama product if you have defaulted on the other one. So you are a bad person within the group that you will be joining. So uh, some of the thing is if you cannot access better services if you're not paying. So if for the good payers, then they are, their limits are enhanced and they are also able to get uh, better monies from the, the enhanced products. Would you report me to Credit Reference Bureau? No. No, at this point, you see the Hustler Fund came to redeem people who are already at the, uh, at the credit, uh, credit Reference Bureau. So at this particular point, it's really rehabilitating you and showing you what is it that you can do now to be a better citizen and actually have a new lease of life in your financial side. You started by lending uh, 500 shillings. Um, is this the same amount that you are lending to, to people? And what is the maximum? Uh, that uh, you have lent so far to an individual? There are people who have borrowed more than 30,000 if you're a good borrower. So, and, and let me even speak about the group. There the are groups that have borrowed over 60,000. So for good borrowers, you are, their limits were increased. And how do you determine who is a good borrower? Because initially what happened is, as you're doing your credit score, the starting point we assume will just use your credit data or your M-Pesa data and your line, your line usage data. But now, we, we now are looking at how have you performed within the first fund. So if you are a good person uh, who have been repaying, borrowing and repaying, then your credit is enhanced. And I think there are people more than, I would say more than 1.5 million Kenyans whose, uh, whose limits were enhanced and doubled, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and so for, your, for you to get to 30,000 plus above, I mean, how many times do you need to borrow? So what happens is, um, there are people who have, uh, who have been borrowing and repaying more than 50 times. More than 50 times? Yes, since the fund was established. So with such kind of people who are borrowing and repaying, those are definitely people who, whose limits are, have been growing. And it's not a big population, but at least you would put it at almost like more than 100,000 people who have been able to do that. So in that case, then they are able to grow their limits much, much faster. Mm -hmm. But you, you realize that this is a starting capital. But the aim is to enhance and grow you. So you, formula you formalize your business. As you formalize your business, you'll be able to actually get better credit. And the aim is not to always only borrow from the hustler fund. The aim is to make you um, attractive to other lenders. So like the banks that we are, we are working with, some of them would like to have the best credit people so they can be able to lend to them. So what we are really trying to do is create and clean the people so they can be able to save them. So that whoever has our... Um, who has the potential can actually be able to be grown and can be able to source capital elsewhere. Mm -hmm. And the repayment uh, period still remains uh, 14 days? Yes, for the individual, uh, the, the, the personal loan product, it's still 14 days. Then, however, for the, for the Chama product or the group product, that, has, that is more. So it is anything 30 to, uh, to 3 months uh, for, for that particular product. Mm -hmm. yes. uh, tell us something about uh, the savings. You talked about um, savings of about 1.7? 1.7 billion, 1.7 yes. billion shillings. Yes, yes. Um, so uh, have you, is, where is this money? Is it in government? Has it been invested in, in, in money market funds or, or where is it? The, uh, the money is invested in government securities. So you are going to get a return. And in government in securities, you are talking about bonds and bills. Treasury bills. Mm -hmm. Treasury bills. So at least you get treasury bill rates. So uh, for the people who could not access that kind of return before, now they are able to access that kind of return. And then it's distributed. So the, govern the, the, the fund itself is governed by the Retirement Benefits Authority. So it is going to be due to have the, very, the normal governance structure so that there is clear clarity in terms of what is going on. What was the name of that fund? It's Financial Inclusion Fund Savings Fund. Uh, service fund. Okay. And uh, how many people have opted in? Everybody who has saved or who has borrowed 
is a member of the fund because there is a 5% mandatory savings. There is also now the voluntary savings, which we have saved well over 30 million. There also we are seeing a lot of traction. There are people who are in between the two. So we have seen a lot of traction there, yes. At what point am I allowed to access my savings? So there are two types of savings. Once, we, once the 5% is deducted, 70% goes to your long-term savings, which is your pension, so that you access at pension, uh, as a pension when you retire. For people who have retired... When do you retire? Uh, we have defined the retirement age as 60 years, mm -hmm. which, again, is something that we are still going to really checking and seeing is that really the right thing, especially for the hustler, do they really retire at 60? Yeah, but because they don't retire. <laughs> they don't retire at 60, or let's just say yes, when the energy. But you see, for you have to create rules to guide you. So that's why we started that. However, if people are above that age, then after one year, then we see how, how is it that they can be able to access that fund, the funds. Mm -hmm. yes. uh, have you done any uh, uh, payout? No, because the first payout has to happen after one year, one year after the inception. So you see we are still eight months, so we are still, mm -hmm. yeah. So you're likely to have the first payment sometimes in, um, in November? In November, December, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, and uh, what, what rate is the fund growing at? So in terms of return, what return is the fund getting? It is average treasury bill rate. So every month we'll do an average rate and then that is what you get credited for. So if, for example, uh, we, we are talking about the most recent, it's at 12%. So they do 12% for this month and then as it goes. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's a, revol it's a rolling interest rate. Mm -hmm. So um, 1.7 billion shillings is what has been deducted from people? And uh, how much interest has this garnered so far? So if you look at 1.7 multiplied by about 10%, uh, uh, that's about 170. Yes, that's what will be distributed to the various people oh. on average, on average okay. after one year. After one year? Yes. And what about the voluntary one? So the voluntary, it's, it's the, rate, the investment rate is the same. And uh, what then the, return, the, the rate you'll get is the same. That is about 30, 30 million so far. So a lot, we need to do a lot of sensitization so people can know that I can actually save for a specific need through the voluntary savings. That is 30 million shillings in terms of savings. And how, what's the membership? The membership is well over 100,000. Over 100,000? Yes, voluntary savers, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so what are you doing to increase this number? Because it's very small by all means. Thanks for this interview. I think these are the conversations that we shall have with most of the people, especially who have access to the, to the Manainchi, so that they can realize that we can continue impacting the, the conversation about you can do this and you can use this money to invest. So a lot of conversation in terms of uh, telling people what is it that we are doing and then also telling the success stories. So we shall definitely be happy to be partnering with the media houses so that we can be able to tell the story more. Mm -hmm. And... You know, the fund is supposed to be 50 billion shillings, uh, but so far you've given out 33? You talked about 30 what? Yes, we have given yeah, this amount, uh, this is about 33 billion, yes. About 33 billion shillings. Yes. Um, and when we look at uh, the allocations that were done by the National uh, Treasury in the just concluded financial year, um, they allocated 10 billion shillings to the Hustlers Fund um, in the current financial year. Would this be enough for you? Um, when you think about what the government is doing, there are, there are many uh, needs. So I think the, the conversation is start with what you have. As you show success and traction, they'll be able to maybe uh, allocate more. So um, I wouldn't say that uh, there is anyone who will ever say, no, this money is enough. But the thing is, what do you do within what you have? What are the success stories that you can, you, you can actually show? Because I believe that start where you are, grow and show success. But uh, how much, what would you do with 10 billion shillings, you know, if your fund was supposed to be 50 billion shillings? So far, I think there has been success. When you have 7 million Kenyans having borrowed and repeat borrowing into this fund, actually the total number of people who have borrowed from the fund are well about 17, 17 million. 7 million are repeat customers. So you can imagine you have been able to do that so far. You have an additional 10 billion to do, even much more. So by any means, the fund is still growing and it's going to grow. So with 10 billion, you can actually be able to grow your membership in the Chama and be able to go to the grassroots and so that you're able to actually help people mm -hmm. that way. So far you have two products, um, you know, the loans for individuals and the, the Chamas. And you're supposed to roll out another product sometimes in November. Yes. What is this? So you start by graduating people. So the first product is for largely individual 
who are looking to either start their business, but unfortunately maybe some of them is an institute for consumption, then you're now moving them and graduating them to Chama. You're actually almost like tripling the amount of money that they can access through there. So at that particular point and in one year, if all goes well, you actually have having, uh, brought an individual from a point of they didn't have a business or they have very little capital for their business. They have grown it. No, they, have, they can borrow three times through the Chama. And now they are ready to formalize their business. So when they're ready to formalize their business, that is registration. Now they can actually access more, more capital. So that is the graduation that we are seeing. Start from a person who has not maybe uh, even ideated what business they want to. So you are working with them that journey. And you not only give them money, you're going to be training them. This is how you do to grow your business. Then grow them to the Chama product, then grow them to the SME product. Mm -hmm. Between individuals and Chamas, who has a better repayment profile? Um, the Chama is, because it's self-regulating within the people. So naturally what has happened, if you look at the studies, people, people have paid better in the form of chamas as opposed to individuals because there is a self-regulating mechanism within the fund, the, the, within the, the chamas. And that is why the table banking, especially for the ladies, has actually done very well even in this country. Mm -hmm. And so you're looking at a repayment rate of how much? You see the product is still very young. Huh? So it's, uh, this is the second month and uh, some of these loans are even three, uh, three months. So the repayment rate right now, it's not necessarily easy to tell whether it, how, how good or what, bad it is because people have not even defaulted. You cannot say anyone has defaulted in the Chama product. Mm -hmm. So our focus right now on the Chama product is really sensitizing people to actually form groups. And the, groups, the, the group formation, the beauty is not only are we forming groups to borrow, we actually uh, formalize it. The formalization happens through the registration through MSEA. So as MCA registers, you can actually use that certificate to even bid for businesses. So the, the Hustler Fund is not only a lending platform, it is also helping with the formalization of businesses in the country. Mm -hmm. I mean, when, when you look at the number of funds uh, that uh, the government has rolled out, um, you know, the, the Hustler Fund is not the first one. I mean, we had uh, the Women Enterprise Fund, you know, that was launched in, in 2007. Then uh, we, have, we had the Youth Fund that was launched in, in 2014. And now we have the Hustler Fund. How is it different from uh, the, 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 the Women Enterprise Fund and the Youth Fund? All of us are focusing on different segments of the market. So the Women Fund is for the ladies. The, and that is not to say that as a Hustler Fund, we are not lending to the ladies. Then we have the Youth Fund whose focus is really how do we help entrepreneurship within the, the Kenyan youth. For us, we are focusing at the bottom of the pyramid so, so that we are looking at how do we access this and how do we at, uh, achieve uh, the overall distribution across the country. So what then the government is doing is that in as much as all of us are focusing on a different, uh, different sector or subsector of the economy, then how then can we ride on the infrastructure that have been created? So one of the things that we will be doing is that uh, we will be working very closely with the rest of the funds so that we can see how do they, they digitize within the platform that we have already uh, rolled out. Mm -hmm. what, what would you say is the biggest uh, challenge facing Hustler Fund? I think it's uh, education. And the reason I say education is because if you look at the Chama product, you have better benefits, you can borrow more, and, uh, but they, they take the... the the uptick, we want to push the uptick there because then there is a lot of uh, self-regulation within the chamas. So the, educating people on the benefits of the Hustler Fund and how they can benefit with the new product is key. And also how can they benefit through the savings? How can they increase their savings? So I feel like the flow of information is what we need to actually push down so that people can realize, yes, one, first this is a fund and I'm borrowing. I need to repay. And as much as it is social capital, how, max, how do I maximize the return from it? Yeah, yeah. And in terms of uh, you know, gender profile, uh, who is borrowing more between men and women? Interesting, it's almost a 50-50. So the ladies are at 49, the guys are 51. In terms of the rule, uh, looking at the, um, the general usage of phone between a feature for phone and a smartphone, again, almost 47, uh, 53, with the, with the feature phone actually being more. So you can actually see in terms of distribution, uh, in terms of economic and in terms of uh, gender and across the country, seems to be really well distributed. Mm -hmm. Yes. And in terms of uh, um, age bracket? So 
the young people that is 18 to let's say below 50 they have borrowed more than 80 percent of the funds so then that being 80 percent 80 percent yes uh, be, below the age of 40 below the age of 40 yes and so you have the rest uh, 20 percent above the age of 40 and you see uh, again about 38 40 percent are the between the age of 18 to 30. 18 to 30. Yeah. Um, and within the same bracket i mean do you still have um you know almost an equal gender parity yes it's all the gender the gender equation is about 50 50. i would, I would just put it at close to 50 50. when you do your um you know your credit profile i mean or your your, your research um most people are borrowing for what is it for consumption for business expansion for starting a business so initially when when they the initial people who borrowed uh, i would say most of them actually borrowed for consumption i would put it at maybe 30 40 percent but now subsequent to that we have seen the, as, a, as, a, as the business stabilizes, as the product stabilizes, now people are borrowing for business. And especially when you look at these Chama people, we're also aligning them. So based on what the government wants to achieve, you actually bet, get better scoring, if, for example, in the key value chains. Mm -hmm. yeah. which, which business um, is more popular? So what we have not gone to the granule of saying what particular business, so we would classify trade and uh, maybe services and then agriculture and all that. So a lot of people who are borrowing and just look at the profile, most of them will be in, uh, in trade services uh, and then agriculture, yeah. And, and this is because if you look at industrial and uh, maybe manufacturing and all that, they would need a larger ticket item. So what then we do is when we get people who want a bigger ticket item, we send them to some of the funds like the Kenya Industrial Estate because they tend to give uh, more, more capital and also are more geared towards growing that, that kind of business. You, you, you've been uh, the acting CEO for the last four months. Uh, what have you learned about this Hustler Fund? That there is, there is an opportunity and there are people who genuinely need capital, they need support, they need nurturing for them to grow to the second, to the next level. And the other thing is um, there is a lot of, again, formed groups that we could leverage on and really use them to grow the economy. I think Kenyans by nature are not lazy people. They want to work. So if you just look at the key challenges facing them and, and their businesses, there is a way you can transform the general economic activity mm -hmm. in the country. And out of the 47 counties in Kenya, uh, which, ki which country has the highest number of borrowers? Nairobi, because uh, naturally uh, we have a bigger population. So around Central, uh, we have a lot of borrowers and also a lot of repayment. So that, that also propels. So I, 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 uh, I, will, I could share with you just the list of uh, how the, country, the counties have, have, have performed. But the beauty is across the entire country, up to including Wajir and everywhere, we have seen people borrowing. Mm -hmm. People borrowing. And where do you have uh, the lowest borrowing of again, the counties? I think, again, also because of the population, uh, you would again see places in the northeast and maybe having lower just because of the again population within the same uh, this, and also information dissemination. So that's why our, you will realize that now what will happen in the next phase will have a lot of communi communication and teaching people what they need to do. Mm -hmm. And in terms of repayment history, which country has uh, which county has uh, the highest rate? Again, based on the economic activity and also the amount of people who have borrowed, again, I would say around the central region and um, the Nairobi area. Yes. And, and, and you see the repayment, when you think about it, it's also driven by the economic activity that people are undertaking with the money. So places where the, the GDP is largely supported, you'll naturally see a lot of a better repayment rate. So one thing that the Hustler Fund is going to help is how do you increase the economic activity across so that even the rate actually grows. And who has a better repayment history between men and women? <laughs> That's an interesting one. I've not looked at it in terms of gender, but naturally I would think that ladies would be paying better. Why? Based on <laughs> <laughs> because I'm one. I think ladies naturally have a better repayment rate. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. And, and but uh, now in terms of joining the groups, it's interesting that the ladies are low. Um, the men have, have formed more groups than the ladies. Mm -hmm. And, and when you look at it from an age bracket, uh, you talked about 80% um, being below the age of 40 and uh, the rest being uh, the 20% being about 40. Uh, when you look at those two categories, uh, who has a better 
repayment profile. Interesting, it actually cuts across. It's almost that, uh, yes, the lower, the younger people are paying better, but uh, almost They are like paying it. better? Yes. Than the older folks? Yes, yes, yes. Wow, and yeah. those are the people who are considered by commercial banks as uh, risky borrowers. But you see, because for them, they also don't need a lot of capital. So they, this, they are using this for, for, for running their businesses, so they are able to turn it around. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Um, and when you look at, um, you know, the Hustler Fund, what lessons have you learned so far in the in the last seven months of this fund? I think execution is key. When you take put your mind to something, uh, just throw yourself all in. I think that's what the government did. They decided that this has to work and it has worked. I think it's a clear success story. Uh, the other thing is people are looking for opportunities. They need support. And once you provide the support, they are willing to go the step further to actually do what is required. And... Uh, I think um, people are also hungry for information. So it's good for us to just know that it is our duty to train, to teach and train people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And in terms of, um, you know, growing the fund and of course uh, rolling out more products, what else should we look forward for? So there is naturally the loan products that we are going to grow into. But one of the other things that we are looking at is how can we get other sort of capital? Once, we, once someone has graduated, can they get other sort of capital? And I think there are a lot of conversations around that. There is like the startup bill, which we, uh, we made our contributions to. How do these people get incubated? How do these people get, how do they grow so that our, our private equity capital would like to participate in it. So those are some of the things that we shall be having conversation around. How do you graduate these people and how do you create a capital structure that really caters for them? Mm -hmm. yes. And in terms of um, changes to make the fund more inclusive, much bigger, what should we look forward for? So in terms of access, again, having used the entire, uh, all the three MNOs, uh, mobile network operators, we are able to reach uh, a lot of people. Again, the next level of, um, of products is really how do, you use, how do you partner with the various financial institutions so that they can actually reach where we don't reach, so the corporates, uh, the circles. So those are some of the things that we are going to look out for. And then, again, from, uh, from a capitalization perspective, how do we get diversified capital other than reliant on 100% on government? How do we work with the rest of the people around uh, like donor partners to actually propel this even further? Very good. What is your message to the people watching this program? that the Hustler Fund is, um, an, we all get opportunities and maybe the opportunity that has come to you is through the Hustler Fund. Take it, make the best out of it and now then leave the rest and they will fall in place. So do your part. Once you do your part, do it very well and then the rest will fall in place. Elizabeth, thank you very much for joining us and of course um, for sharing those insights with us. Your time is highly appreciated on Inside Government. Thank you so much. Thanks for having us. Very good indeed. Happy to have more of this. Thank you. Elizabeth Nkuku is the Acting Chief Executive Officer of the Hustler Fund, joining us on this uh, week's edition of Inside Government to share with us more insight about the fund and the future of the fund. You have heard it from her. My name is O'Brien Kimani. Thank you very much for your time. Have yourself a good afternoon.